Hello, my name is Matthew Epic. In this video, I'm going to teach you how to recreate sounds from any NES game using the Nintendo Sound Format, commonly referred to as NSF files. This is an extremely powerful method. Not only will you learn how to recreate sounds from your favorite games, but you will be able to develop a personal knowledge of how NES sound synthesis works. This tutorial is in three parts. First, I will show you how to use the NSF importer to open NSF files. Second, I'll show you how to decipher and understand NSF files in order to create your own sounds. Lastly, I will show you how to translate this information into useful instruments and techniques for your own music. Before we begin, you'll want to download Brad Smith's NSF importer. I have included a link in the description. At a glance, NSF importer might seem a lot like Famitracker. Same interface, same functions, however, the biggest difference can be found under the file menu where you can import NSF files. NSF files contain the music and sound effects from NES games. By importing an NSF file into NSF Importer, we can view and learn all about the code used to program the music and sound. Many games NSF files have been uploaded, they're easy to find with a little searching. To import an NSF, click File, Import NSF and select the NSF file you wish to import. From here, you'll be able to select what track you wish to import from the file. There isn't a consistent organizational method, and sometimes tracks lack names and authorship information. For this reason, you may have to search through tracks to find the one you're looking for. With the NSF file open, you can play it back like any other Famitracker file. However, there are a few key differences to note about imported NSF files. Firstly, keep in mind that NSF files from your favorite NES games were not created in Famitracker. As such, they do not display the familiar constructs we use, like instruments, equally measured rows, speed functions, that sort of thing. Instead, imported NSF files display their entire musical data at speed 1 using only a single blank instrument. Perhaps the most difficult part of deciphering NSF files is parsing through the sheer volume of data. It's not uncommon to find consecutive rows littered with very specific effects, volumes, and note changes. If we were to create and import an NSF we made in Famitracker, we could see that the rapid clusters of data are usually caused by effect functions and various instrument filters. Take for example these two short snippets. First is played in an SF importer, and the second in Fami Tracker. Notice how the playback is exactly the same. It's the way the musical data has been input that is different. The imported NSF displays everything at speed 1, so there are a lot more rows and frames needed to accurately interpret the music. The Famitracker file uses a higher speed setting and instruments. Both these functions compress and hide data so we may more clearly interpret the pattern window visually. By studying NSF files, we can backwards engineer musical data to create Famitracker instruments and large scale musical structures. There are Famitracker hacks which do this for us, but for this example, I will show you how to do this yourself. I really can't emphasize enough how important it is to study these files on your own. Careful study will reveal secrets about music composition, sound synthesis, and more. Let's start with a few simple examples and work our way up. Take the beginning of this piece, which begins with a thick unison riff. We can see that this trick is achieved by programming notes in unison with a fine tuning difference of 1. We can also note the volume envelope, which has an instant attack and fast decay. Let's open up a copy of Famitracker and try to copy this instrument. First, we'll create a new instrument with a short decay. Second, we'll input a unison line between our two pulse waves and the triangle channel. Lastly, we'll adjust the fine tuning by one. We can continue fine tuning our example by changing the speed setting. As you may have noticed, the module plays back too slow compared to our example file. When looking at the NSF, things tend to happen every four rows. Let's try adjusting the speed to four in order to get the correct tempo. <laughs> We're 
rows which consecutively use the fine tuning effect with a clear note trajectory usually indicate the use of a pitch bend effect and or vibrato effect. For instance, in the square two channel, the notes ascend and descend while the pitch bend is activated. We can tell the note begins on A sharp and bends to C sharp, then falls an octave. This is repeated at a lower volume level to create an echo effect. Using our previous instrument, let's try using the bend effect in the same manner. Let's input notes which bend up and down with a little vibrato. To mimic the echo effect, we'll repeat them at half the volume a half note later. Let's look at more complicated sounds which use two channels. Initially, it may seem more complex than it is. Using the play single row function, which is default control plus enter, we can step through the frame row by row. We see that channel 2 is a note for note copy of channel 1 but delayed by a row. Additionally, it uses a fancy duty cycle function combined with some fine tuning modulation to add some spice to the sound. To recreate the sound, we'll need two instruments. For the first instrument, let's copy the arpeggio and paste it in the arpeggio window. In this case, we're copying a descending minor arpeggio in octaves starting on the fifth of the chord. Next, let's clone the instrument and add some duty cycle modulation using the pipe command. We'll use the pattern pipe 220. Finally, we'll program in some notes, making sure to delay the second channel by a tick and adding a little vibrato. So far, I have only covered how to recreate instruments from NSF files. However, there is so much more to learn. From a music composition perspective, we can study harmonic progressions, voice leading, counterpoint, rhythm, channel arrangement, form, phrase structure, and so on. This is, as you might have guessed, a lot of work, and it's well worth it if you really want to learn what makes these pieces tick. However, there's no way I could cover all these topics in one video. So if you want to learn about a particular composition technique, leave a comment below and I'll respond to you or make a video about it. Until next time, feel free to check out my book and other tutorials on this channel. Also, make sure to subscribe in order to keep up to date with the Family Tracker tutorials I'm releasing. Thanks for stopping by and I'll see you next time.